Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph a uh, viscosecant. And you can see there's kind of a lot of twos up here, right? Um, so when graphing um, the cosecant function, what I want to do is graph the reciprocal function. So the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. Now, when graphing sine, um, I want to determine um, some very important parts. And to determine those important parts, I need to make sure I understand what is the kind of the transformation um, form of my equation. So that could be d plus a sine of bx minus c. All right, where d tells you if we're going to have a vertical shift, which in this case you can see 2. So my graph is going to shift up and down 2. a is going to tell me if there's a reflection as well as my amplitude, um, where you can see now my amplitude is 2. And bx minus c, that's going to kind of determine um, b affects the period, and c affects if there's a shift left or right. So well, you can see now I have 2x. Um, so therefore, my period um, is going to be changed. So what we're going to do is let's write them all out. So I'll write amplitude, period, x scale, phase shift, and vertical transformation. So my amplitude is the absolute value of a, which in this case is the absolute value of 2, which is just equal to 2. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, which in this case my b is 2. So it's 2 pi divided by 2, which equals pi. Here are my x scale. Um, dot, dot, dot. x scale is just period divided by 4. So I have pi divided by 4. Phase shift, I just take whatever's inside my function and set it equal to 0. Uh, so that's going to be 2x equal to 0, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 0. And vertical transformation is d, which is my 2. So therefore, all right, so let's go back and revise again. Amplitude again is going to tell us how high the graph is going to go up and low, right? It's, it's actually the half distance from the maximum to the minimum. So that distance is going to be 2. The period is going to be how long it takes for the graph to repeat itself. The x scale is the distance between each and every important part of um, Cyclical. I was looking for cyclical. I could not, for as long as I'm making these videos, I've been trying to think of the word. It was cyclical. Um, but the x scale is going to be the dis distance between each and every important point. Phase shift is going to be if you're going to be shifting the graph left to right um, from its initial period. And vertical transformation is obviously shifting the graph up or down. So now we have all the information. Let's go and start plotting. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to graph a, uh, I'm going to start at 0 because that's where my phase shift is. Um, or a phase shift. A phase shift is zero, so that means it doesn't start from anything. So I know what the parent graph looks like, as you should know what the parent graph looks like. And the parent graph, we start at an initial period which starts at zero. If there's a phase shift, start at where the phase shift is. But since my phase shift is zero, I'm going to start at zero. Now, uh, we need to follow the x scale because remember, as we're graphing sine, you know, it goes up to its maximum, x uh, intercept, minimum, x intercept. So between each and every one of those important points is our x scale. So I'm just going to start scaling my graph. And what's nice about going positive, negative, or a, a period to the right, a period in the positive direction, a period in the negative direction, is I can simply just copy, um, copy the exact, uh, exact x scale just in the, in the negative form. Negative form. So you can see it takes 4x scales to create a period, right? Um, all right, so now what we're going to do is I'm actually going to do a couple versions of the graph. The first one I'm going to graph, I'm going to do the translation, vertical translation last. So basically, the first thing we always do is you know, identify what our period um, would be, or I'm sorry, amplitude. So we know that's 1, 2. So instead of going, you know, remember, the initial period starts at 0, then goes up to its maximum. But now the amplitude is 2. So now we're going to go up to 2, right? And then the next important point is an intercept. Then we go to a minimum, which is going to be down at 2, and then up 2. So it looks something like this. All right? But remember, we're now taking this graph, and we're shifting that whole graph up 2 units. So when, I, when I'm doing a vertical translation, what I like to do is I like to redraw the x-intercept being shifted up. So I'm taking this x-intercept and shifting it up 2 units. So I, the reason I like to do that is when I'm graphing, it just kind of helps me keep where that axis is. Because each and every one of these points, I'm now literally just shifting them up two units. So now my graph is going to look something like this. So that's now my point there. This point is now right here. That point is now there. And then this point is now up here. 
There you go. So the next point would be minimum intercept, maximum intercept. Well, there you go. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph the cosecant. Oh, da! I didn't even, what am I doing? I forgot, I gotta graph cosecant, right? This is needs to be dashed. We're not graphing sine. We're graphing cosecant, right? So the main important thing we need to understand about the reciprocal function is where the sine graph um, was equal to 0, right? If I shifted this back down, you could see, oh, we each and every one of these x-intercepts would have is an x-intercept down here if I would have shifted back down. Well, at each one of those values, that's going to be 0 for sine, so therefore it's undefined for cosecant. So let's go to blue now. Um, so therefore, at each one of these x-intercepts, I'm now going to create an asymptote because these now values are undefined for my cosecant graph. OK, so now that I've had my asymptotes, to finish my graphing, um, they, sh they do share the same point, which is the maximum and the minimum. And now I'm just going to have my graph approach each and every asymptote. Because they're not going to intersect the asymptotes, but they are going to approach them. And if you want to get a little bit more exact values on the shapes of the um, curves, uh, you can go ahead and use a table function or your graphing calculator. But in the blue, ladies and gentlemen, is your graph for y plus 2 cosecant of 2x. Thanks.